What's up today on Dude Grow Show? Is UV worth the investment? Short answer, yeah, it's worth the investment, man. UV's trending, Scotty. It's good to go, man. We're going to talk about, wait, first off, no holiday gear? Is it, I mean, it's pretty close. When I'm within a week of Christmas, like, I start to go for it. This was a Christmas gift. I have that, man. I don't have too much festive stuff. I looked, man. I think I have a Merry Christmas, you filthy animal sweater somewhere, but I have to look for it. I love it. I go full out today. Today's special show is eat, eat since we're working out down low, too. Check it out. You know what I'm saying? Oh, check it out. Yeah. Right. Right, baby. Wow. wow. Got to watch the video show if you don't see what I'm talking about. All right, let's get into this. Grambo, what's up? We got some grow talk. Um, straight up from dudegrows.com. Uh, UV lights and terpene levels from Mike. Go to dogrows.com and use code STRAIN DEPENDENT as your invite code. If you need to create another account, call, come on over there, participate, get your grow question up on the show. By Mike. Uh, so I like that. Is, that's really paranoid, man. It's just yeah. Mike. Like, look, uh, it's just Mike. All right, I'm going to use the most popular name in America. Is it still the most popular name in America? I don't think so. It used to be, man. You like not believe people if they're like you got a Mike, Mike, just Mike friend when you ask what's your last name? Mike, just Mike. Uh, uh, nice guy, just Kenny. Like, Hi, I'm nice Mike guy, Smith. Kenny. <laughs> yeah. I like Mike Smith. All right. So it's kind of a Steve Jobs is one. Anyway, uh, let's take it to grow. Mike says I recently added an HLG 30 UVA light to my HLG Scorpion. It's pretty slick how they do this. Look at the, if you can show that image, Grambo, with the way it mounts. Yeah, it mounts right under their LED fixture to a few of them, not oh, just the Scorpion over at Horticulture yeah, Lighting cool. Group. Um, it says, I'm wondering if others are noticing improvements on terpene levels of their flower when using UV light. I see some preliminary indications are showing up to a 30% increase in terpene levels. That does not mean THC or strength of your bud, that's your terpenes. Yeah, so, but it does have a lot to do with the strength of your bud. THC is one part of it. Terpenes yeah, are, are, big, are a big deal. Terpenes and the entourage effect are a big deal. You can have 30% THC weed that if it was dried poorly or whatever, that it doesn't have many terpenes left on it, or it never did, uh, that won't you get you very high. I mean, you can have 18% terpy AF weed mm. that will get you big. And I've, I've read up a lot about this <laughs> recently, and he might be confusing just a little bit. He said the primary indications are showing 30% terpene increase. I believe that's terpene and cannabinoid increase. So it's a 30%. But then remember what Guru said during the, the last panel show. He said that it decreases biomass. So if you guys really, really like smoking flour, sometimes that can reduce your total yield, but increase your uh, oil like production. So huh. use I like to mimic. I mean, this is all, there's so much out there. That's who's really there. Only a few people have really done the trials and like, you know, put some science to it. Um, like shout out, AB uh, testing, over, like the scientific method and stuff like that. UV, AB and <laughs> I did one with <laughs> and one without. Yeah. And a, B, Check testing. out other content. Shout out to, um, uh, sorry if I'm saying it, it's me, grow or my grow, LED, and Dr. Bruce Bugby, I believe, that cat. Like, they've yeah. done a few collaborations, dropping some knowledge on this. And no matter oh, what, great, I'm man. trying to mimic the growing outdoors as far as the sun's the best light. So when we go indoors, what do we lose? We lose IR, depending on your fixture, definitely under LED. There's no IR and UV. Wait, so if, There's no IR and what, LED? Is that definite? I thought infrared was heat. And I thought LEDs could put off some heat. I was shooting from the hip. I'm not a light uh, expert, but because the in, <laughs> infrared infrared is heat, right? Let's take a look. Grandpa's, Grandpa's googling right now, man. No, LEDs do not re. Oh, oh no, UV I or put, infrared. I put light. IR. Okay, yeah. no, no, they don't admit it. Okay, you're all right, sir. Yeah, all right, I'm like a pro over here. But so I want to mimic that to a degree. And, and, and out of all the testimonials and forums and reading and things I've done. Um, there is a difference, and most people are noticing. If the verdict's kind of out, which one's better between UVA and UVB? Um, you're getting UVA, Horticultural Lighting Group has a LED fixture that emits UVA, but UVB is a fluorescent fixture. That's where you're getting that from, from like Migro LED um, they have. And they're not expensive, and they're low wattage, and they're small. So it, I really love this idea because 
anybody can implement this into their tent, into their grow. They're not going to add a bunch of heat. They're not going to break their circuit breakers. You're good to go. So one, I say one thing you try do want to be careful with with the ones the the LEDs that have the strong uh, A and B is that uh, one of the things that really you know we love about all the LED lights is how long they last. Oh, you're not going to replace bulbs or anything, but the UV does degrade diodes, and there's no mints in that. It really, really does. So it is good. It, the ones that have the strong A, B, and they can't produce C. <clears throat> there's a lot of double ended fixtures that are coming out with the HPS. Uh, they're uh, instead of being HPS lighting, it's full LED lighting, so you can see certain companies. Companies have the double ended. It looks like a old school, like Gavita double ended, but it's actually a UV light. That's the only way you can get C. But yeah, watch out for that degradation. It can cut your lifetime down from like a decade to a few, <laughs> a few years. I just look, asked the uh, uh, UV sun lamps for tanning <laughs> and it had the, for the tanning beds, they use UVA rays. Uh, those are tanning rays and are less likely to cause sunburn than UVB rays. Mm -hmm. Huh. However, that does not make UVA radiation safe, man. So, yeah. yeah. And then the C is the deadly one. And that's why it's so good for your plants. Your plants are getting hit with all this toxic light. And they're like, oh, I better put some sunscreen on, man. I'm going to die. Yeah. And that's all the oils. Yeah, definitely. But the B, you don't, the C, UVC, you definitely don't want to be in the same room. No, or, in fact, those double endings I was talking about, they're mainly for commercial grade and you're only allowed to like, you have to turn them off if people, they run them four hours to eight hours a day yeah. and you can't work under them. And that's UVB, right? UVC. What? Well, UVC, I thought was the clean light. That stuff. is. And that's why the uh, that's why it's such so good for oil production. You hit them with that C and uh, no LEDs come with C. It, it's too volatile. Got it, got but it. yeah, those double endings do have C. Word. Yeah. So I'm going to get, I got a couple comments here um, from dudegrows.com. Midmo grower says to me, UVA is pretty much useless. You need UVB. You will see more production out of your buds and trichomes and terpenes. I have proven this side by side to side grows test done twice. The one without was frosty, but not as much as the UVB. In parentheses, I did not do any scientific testing, just my eyes, my nose, and taste. Ooh. As for terpenes, it was a huge notice of flavor. Definitely the UVB had a lot more depth of flavor. Nice. I have need, uh, I've needed to use an UVB, oh, for Migro since 2019, and it's put a, a good investment. And Migro suggests only two hours per light cycle throughout the whole growth. And I think these things are like 19 watts or something. So, and, uh, but there's other people that have said they ran them the whole light cycle. And then a horticultural lighting group recommends running their UVB at a different rate during the light cycle. So there is a bit of whatever testing to be done, um, but I'm liking what we're seeing, man. And to me, it just makes sense. Uh, not scientific, dude. It gets it outside. Bud grows awesome outside. So we want it in our indoor grow room, in my humble opinion, Scotty. Uh, yeah, I would like to add a UV light, but A or B, which one would you want? I, I'm, I'm leaning towards B is the first one I go with, um, a as well, but I don't know about running them both at the same time. These are things to be decided, yeah. and, uh, figured I out. Mean, I, I give you sure. my opinion, like for me, UVA is pretty much useless. You know, you'll, with UVB, <laughs> you'll see more production out of your buds, trichomes and terpenes. How they do? Yes. Midmo yes, grower, man. Go. Great information. It's dropping science like Galileo dropped an orange. Hey. Yes, I like it. I like it. And uh, let's shout out. Hey, let's shout out to some DDC producers here. Okay. Uh, I want to give it up. Yes, DDC producers, happy holidays, making the show happen. Hey, Midmo Grower, I believe you are also a DDC producer, man. So I'll shout out to you. And for participating on dudegrows.com, let's hook them up. I'm off shooting off the hip today with some recharge. I'll make it happen. I got connections. I'll hook you up with some recharge, Midmo okay. Grower. Okay. I know the um, guy. You got it. Also, also going to shout out to Half Inch Wonder. Oh boy. Hmm. I got it. Come on, stop. Just there's a little to unpack. That there, was my huh? nickname in college. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what could it mean? <laughs> we what are, could know. it mean? Like a half is, is punch? Grambo doing is Grandpa doing stand up at the DDC Cup again, or did we ban that? Did Scotty? I do stand up at the Cup? I think that was just me mortifying Scott. No, dude, I'm, I've gotten to know you a little better. Dude, Grandpa's actually funny, man. Yeah, yeah he's all right. Yeah, professional comedian. Oh, uh, what's up? I'm do Lunchbox Ty. What's growing on? Happy holidays. Who you got, Scotty? I got who that one. smell. What, what smell? What smell? What smell? You know what smell I'm talking about. That's tobacco, man. I just uh, that's, a cigarette, that's CBD. Man. That's CBD. You crazy. 
<laughs> GGC oh, Produces 2024 is going to be happening, man. Uh, we are going to be working with some of the best in the industry here to extend it. Like UV lights. Stay tuned. Don't buy one yet. Um, hooking you guys up with bigger, better deals for supporting the show at $10 a month, man. You get paid back tenfold. Come on over to dudegrows.com forward slash support. Uh, we need this to make the show continue to happen, and it's been awesome. You've done it for 10 years now, guys. So definitely, and the reason I say that, I don't know if you know my soapbox, Scotty, is we, you guys enable us to, to be able to say what we want to say and do what we want to do. We have a few fine sponsors, of course, but I, I want you know to work with you guys. Listener supported, producer supported, always can mess me over on Patreon, help me build the show, hang out, whatever. Dudegrows.com forward slash support. Yes. Tight work, dude. I do like you your sweater. my cup ties in. You know, yeah. Right? You're very festive, man. You're very festive. Okay. So the only reason I have these shorts is because <laughs> you know the wife. The wife's like, if you wear those shorts, maybe you know it won't go. <laughs> really? <laughs> I maybe, maybe uh, Santa never will, again. I don't know. <laughs> Santa will come early. If you know what I mean. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this month, this month. Uh, All right, so shoot. let's move on with, uh, hey, we're going to do uh, another Grow Talk question, tying it into some of your real buckets, Scotty, um, because this is the one uh, inspired from DudeGrows.com. We had a question, more just like a quick hit on HydroLock <laughs> Irrigation System by Phil D. Snugs. <laughs> Phil D. <Okay>. Snugs. <laughs> Come nugs. on. New winner, man. Love it. Dude, that is uh, good. This is like. This is a conversation starter for Scotty. We know we all know he's the SIP guy, the sub irrigation planner. So I wanted to pull this up because this is uh, has anyone used the Hydrolock irrigation system with New Millennium? Was wondering if it clogs the misters. This is like if you guys aren't watching the video show, this cone goes over the top of your pot um, or your growing meter, like in a five gal, three gal, whatever. They have different sizes, and it plugs in quarter inch line. And then it mist puts out uh, like a spray. So that's where you got to worry about clogging with systems when you get down to quarter inch line um, and making sure everything's good, depending on what you're using. That's what he's asking about new mill. Maestro chimes in and says, the website says it's for mineralized nutrients. You can't use organics really in, in fine drip irrigation systems. And new millennium is as keen as they come. Misters will eventually clog with any nutrients. So yes. clean them regularly. I wouldn't personally buy an irrigation system without the points. Oh, I like this. I wouldn't personally buy an irrigation system with points of failure because it's cheaper and more foolproof to make your own. I think that's where you're at, Scotty. That's that's oh, where yeah. I'm at. I started looking. <clears throat> somebody else had one. I don't know if we still have it on here, but uh, somebody was celebrating. I think they had auto pot. And they were like, hey, first auto pass pot harvest, which is also a different uh, uh, sip bucket. And I just thought it was kind of cool. I just kind of, I got, oh, where are they? My plants from not watering them. I got, <laughs> uh, you know, stung, I guess. So I figured maybe we could talk about it, man. You know, the best way to water plants, if it's sip buckets or if it's drippers, <laughs> hand watering, they all have their advantages. Well, you guys know I'm getting around a little bit more these days. People are being very nice and hooking me up with uh, like fun gigs and going out and di do, meeting different places, hanging out with tops and heart and soil, getting all this cool information. Yeah. And, uh, so I have a little bit of inside knowledge on this. And so they actually do provide the, uh, the new mill has a line called Cyatetics. That's their commercial line. So if you ever want to do anything with drip or uh, what do they call that? The dosatron or anything like that? The Cyatetics is essentially new mill without the cloudy cloudiness. That's like clay and particulate and stuff. So yeah, if you wanted to use it, Cyatetics is a thing. Grambo, hang That's on. the same. What's that? Go ahead. Has anyone ever given you the Dianetics book before? Yeah, I think you're about to, and I'm getting excited. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. If I appreciate it. Okay. I appreciate it's what the nutrient cult. company will do. We'll do those things. That's like Canna has a specific line. If you're in water culture or hydroponics, use that. And then they have a specific line for cocoa. If you're in cocoa, they have a specific organic line, but you can't be in the straight cocoa to tie the nutrients to the type of media you're in for success. So, but that, you know, a con would be, I like my organic inputs, man. Like I yeah. do like to run some funk sometimes and I can't do that through trip drippers. Of course, you can have a hand watering day. That's what I tell people to do with recharge in yes. certain systems. So what's a make treatment. that day. I mean, if you were stuck, if you had hundreds of plants, you can hand or you can run organics through drippers. Do me a favor, Grandpa. Scroll down. Uh, I've got that filter bag, and it just do the large eighth inch drip lines, if you would, right there. Yeah, the, uh, great guys. eighth inch drip lines. Yeah, check those out. The, uh, it's like uh, no, all right. I tell you what, keep those on. Those are okay. not eighth inch drip lines. Look at how easy those things are going to be to clog, yeah. man. You know, there's. 
there's uh, just really small what? Uh, openings there. Yeah, look at that. There you go. Like that, that tubing is so much bigger. That eighth inch tubing right there, mm. it just doesn't clog the same way, man. And clogging is usually operator error, and you got to run these systems a little different, use the right nutrients. Also, at times, they have different uh, products that you can, I forget the name off the top of my head, but we run a flush through the lines to make sure you don't have anything nasty or sitting in there. You know, if you're going to oh, yeah. run anything. I think I met that guy. The BioSafe is one of the guys that do it. They run like not hyp hypochloric acid, but like hypo something else. I don't know. I'm still a newbie. I'm sucking this Do me a favor, Grandpa. Larger properly sized pump is another link that I have over there. Yeah. <laughs> if you buy a larger pump, then you can pressurize your system uh, without having to put something on the end of it, like a dripper or something like that. And so I buy a nice size pump and then I, I pressurize the entire system. So it's get you know, evenly dispersing water through, mm. but I don't have any little fail points like a dripper at the end or anything like that. If I'm using uh, drippers, oh, I didn't know you did that. That's fascinating. So it's like the same thing as like how a water tower works. Like you're pressurizing it from above. Yeah. So that way it's equal. Thank you. Exactly. So very nice. Let's take it too, because I have a question for you on your real buck. Your real buckets. It's a sub irrigation planter. I put up a diagram here, a SIP diagram. I thought was kind of cool. Uh huh. Um, yeah, show that that next one, Grandpa. That yeah, just this guy thought. I don't know. Scotty thought that was a pretty basic one. My question is though, you can't let organic, like a liquid organic nutrient or anything, sit in that bottom res too long. You still want a top water organics and right, or else Agreed. you get a funky reservoir. Yep. Yep. That's why I like that floor flex system isn't for me because you can't, it covers the whole surface. So you can't go and hit it with, I'll take a two gallon watering can, put some funky organic stuff in there and then, uh, uh, just go water. Jeez, I, I did it just yesterday. Uh, eight, six, uh, 15 plants off four gallons of water. And it's just a one, two, three, go to the next one. Yeah. I got called out on that, by the way, when I was taking care of my buddy's garden. He's like, you must have effed up the water count. He's like, each plant, six seconds, okay? So he has like point. 50 plants. You're like, <laughs> That's my point, dude. If you're going out of town, what's the best, you know, then what's the best way to water? Uh, somebody reliable. I mean, for me, the best way in my situation is I am going to be going out of town, hopefully visiting the bakery here into the new year. And yeah. I will have my wife water their garden and there's grow dots and that's what the the media is the first time i've had the whole grow on dots because that's all she has to do is go in there with the hose there's a, a, a pump at the end of the hose a half inch uh, inline valve and half inch supple tuning and she goes around each plant which i'm just going to give her a count to do um and that'll work i mean that's easy enough not as easy according to you probably as if how i mean the sip reservoir though can only last how long for a mature thriving plant um let's say the first two weeks of bloom I mean, how much of a reservoir you can't, well, oh, you're, you're going to say, no, your answer, you're going to tie them into the irrigation, into the center bucket and have them all tied together. Yeah, of course. Hell yeah. How much res How much water is held in that? As much as you want, I guess, with a float valve to work with the a system? With a float valve hooked up to your water line and an infinite. But uh, with that one, I think it's what, three gallons, somewhere around three gallons. Oh, how did I not think of that? I need to get a sip bucket. I just pulled down with my real buckets. They turned out so freaking good. Yeah. They, they really, really worked out. Thanks for and bringing the weed. I, it's drying. But it'll be ready by Christmas, so the, the maybe that uh, the Christmas li bug. the live show that we might do for New Year's, we might be smoking on some Grambo. Uh, I got the uh, the Cherry Paloma times uh, Ladies Night by Soup. I got those at the Cup last year, and they are uh, looking good. Hell yeah, man! Nice. Shout, Shout out, out to, to soup. soup. Thanks, buddy. Shout out to Northern Light Kind. This is the first time you've seen uh, <laughs> my. Uh, my Christmas pipe, man. This is my, it makes me look a little bit just more sophisticated, I think. You know what I'm saying? That's awesome. <laughs> I think you look real sophisticated smoking that thing. Yeah. I think that should be your new show pipe, dude. That's yeah. Pack sick. it. <laughs> Try cigarettes, man. They're very sophisticated. Uh, fly, you too. fools. That Lord okay. Rings. So I, I dig. The reason um, I didn't run SIP myself is I'm addicted to hand watering. I admit it. I, you know, I haven't gone through the program yet. I just love going to every plant. I love, in my opinion, when I'm top dressing, I love to top dress insect grass at times, or maybe I want to do an organic top dressing, or maybe I'm catching a deficiency on one strain and I need to, you know, get some more cow mag through a, you know, different varieties of cow mag yep. that can be top dressed. Yep. In that sense, I love to just go around and soak it in, leach it on through the root zone. So that's why I stick with hand watering. Um, and yeah, 
keep it. Plus, my plants, man. My plants are on saucers. We should check it out. I, I can't. I'm in love with this new grow room, and I want to be able to move everything around easily. So for me, if I have X amount of sips tied together via irrigation, I kind of got to unplug them to move them. That doesn't matter for some people. But yeah, play this. Grandma. Yeah, this, this is a pretty good hit. Just so you know, this is what the video that inspired it. I was watching this video, and I was like, man, hand watering. And then I started thinking about it. And <laughs> I love these videos, dude. These are awesome. If you guys yeah. don't follow Dude Grows on Instagram, make sure you do. Yeah, tight work, dude. <laughs> to I the can't Mac say Daddy Grow Shack. The Mac Daddy ah, Grow Shack. Daddy Grow Room. What's up, guys? How's it going? Let's go through the updates we've had this since January. last week. First off, <laughs> air movement. You can see... All these fans on the walls are moving really good, kicking around. That's cool. Like, you used respect. to need Come such on, bigger man, fans. Just, those okay. little ones are. You doing. want to see just those the are AC infinity yes, they kick ass. Plant. They're moving that the plants. You're that doing good. Ball. You have wow. good air movement. And turn back around here. We also have a fan here that is straight kicking out oh, the window well as a new controller. Check this out. This is our nighttime temperature controller mainly. I what it's going to do is at reason. night, I have it set to 75. So if it gets below 75 at night, come on down here. We have <laughs> a heater that will kick on. You got fans Damn, on fans. It's kicking directly towards the fan button. game. Installed a lower fan right you by step it. up your fan you game, Scott. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm having fan envy here. Uh, we, Dude, I'm a fan that's of That's a heater there? That little thing's a heater? Yeah, you can turn down the volume. We can just that that the thing's a heater. Just my daytime nighttime differentials are only like five degrees difference. Tight and then, work, uh, dude. Yeah, check out this CO two mount here though. My hose, uh, where the CO two injection hose is going wow. up the wall here. I didn't plan this, but it slid right through the fan uh, mount and it's coming right out nice. there behind the fan. <laughs> Wicked. Yeah. That's, hey, one thing about CO two kind of, is it is heavier than air. So not for you. You have a fan on the bottom, but just make sure you have a fan going, uh, you know, a little bit up so that it can at least direct it towards the plants. Well, yeah. And then that fan um, behind me, that stand fan is pointed over towards where the air conditioner is in the back of the room. Like, especially if you have HVAC and that's where its sensors are in the air conditioner. So you got to stir all <laughs> your air happening? really good to get accurate readings on your sensors. Uh, These are the best. <laughs> the wheelie stool. Right. The, we <laughs> the wheelie stool heavy. is the I best, got, yeah. man. Those are great. <laughs> I have That's a little mechanic. Yeah, a little mechanic stool oh. kind of thing. Uh oh. Aiden's not the only That's expert. That's about to man. go bad here, man. No. Kick flip. Dude, can I ask you a question? How long does it take you to do these videos? Because I've tried to do, I do videos like this, and thank God Heisey is there to help me. It was hours for me. Oh, yeah, no, I can't do that. Um, I, yeah, no, no hours, maybe two takes. Uh, I do want to say, you guys, I'm going to try and get a connect. Those saucers are game changers, man. I go in there like I'm a, like I'm the master, which I am of the plants and just you can just kick the plants out of the way with your feet and walk where you want to walk. They're, they hold 300 pounds and they're on, like, as I say in the video, real deal dolly wheels, not no plastic crap. Oh, the granted, real deal dolly they're spendy. Wheel? They're spendy. <laughs> You're, um, you're really getting your, uh, you know, your, what's that slap chop thing? <laughs> your real deal dolly wheel. Those are real okay. deal dolly wheels. You can, you can stand on it. Okay. You can't break it. You're going to love my nuts. You're going to, you're going to love. <laughs> the thing though, um, that I said in that, I believe in that grow is it's as you build a grow room for me, it's always ever evolving. Sometimes I eventually get to the point where it's like, I move controllers and sensors and I'm like, oh, this actually should be over here, um, to get accurate readings on things. And, uh, I do want to uh, shout out to those daytime, nighttime controllers. There's two different brands there. One was Grow Zone and one was Plug and Grow. More on those coming. But they're so easy because they have a photo cell and a knob. So I have a knob that has a sun on it. That's my daytime temp. Turn that to where I want it. And then I have a knob for my nighttime temp. Turn that where I want it. Done. And there's no digital programming. The photo cell does the work. And photo cells are foolproof. It sees the lights come on. And it's like, okay, time to go to daytime mode. Lights go off, time to go to nighttime mode, and zero room for error, really. Um, so shout out to those guys. Uh, we're going to try and get some deals for you, DGC, on those as well. All right. Easiest easiest things to program, dude, in the grow, as far as having two knobs. Um, all right, what else we got, dude? Well, you got some cons here? Are we talking about hand watering still? I don't think so, man. I think we've exhausted that subject. The cons of hand watering is like a couple of days ago, I just got back from Costa Rica and traveling all day. And I'm like, ugh, I've got like six one gallons. I've got to go hand water. You know, everything else could have waited till the morning, you know? Oh, no. 
Mm-hmm. But no, you know, but throat. I just had to drag my ass up, man, and do yeah. It was like I think I got home at like midnight or something, you know. Maybe I'm excited. I like. Um, I will end it with, and everybody knows this. It puts me in the grow. It puts me at each plant site, and I think that's important. It, and it, I would slack on that if I didn't have to go water each plant. I don't have a ton of plants. You know, I got the right amount of plants in there. We'll say, hell, you saw it in the video. Uh, but hey, you're right, dude. Shout outs. I, I just want to say you're that? right. You've always been in the hand watering. I've always been looking for the shortcut. I, that's where the real buckets come from. Uh, but you are 100% right about always being present in the grow. And, A, I do think the plants sense it. I do think they know when somebody's visiting and taking care of them. And uh, just you can see, I mean, it's very easy. You're looking around that grow right there and you go, man, this one. Oh, this is that guava gator. Damn, it looks like it's getting a little bit. It needs some magnesium. I don't know why, but I see it. It needs magnesium. Let me go grab some Epsom salt. Yeah, definitely. Uh, DDC producers, how you doing? Let's shout out to some DDC producers like Kevin Knickerbocker, how you doing, buddy? And techno natural grower. Maybe the plant who digs techno while in the grow. I like it. Plants probably dig on techno, I would guess. Ah, uh, no, he's got a base though. Natural practices, all right? But he understands the technology behind them, okay? Okay. Fair enough. I don't know. How about sticky fingers? I get what that means, <laughs> man. It means you've been trimming a lot of bud and your fingers are all sticky. Or eating jelly sandwiches. Could be. <laughs> Could be. I like it. I hope I hope you producers are hanging out this Friday. We got a Discord 420 happy hour with Soup the Gardener, myself. Scott, are you going to be there? I don't know yet. Um, but that's 420 Pacific time live on Discord. Uh, DDC producers, if you have any issues getting our finance on Discord, message me over on Discord. We'll get you taken care of. We have experts like Jay Maestro. Shout out, buddy. Hope you're doing good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as well as Soup the Gardener can get you on. And that's a great show. You guys are missing out. You're not supporting the show at dogrows.com forward slash support. You're missing out on some great extra content every Friday, 420. If you miss it live, we'll repost it for you guys over on Patreon. So check it there. You can listen anytime. Right. All right. Yes. Yeah, all right, Ed McMahon. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. You are correct, oh. sir. Anybody know what a Knickerbocker yeah. is? Like the New York Knickerbockers? I'm, I think it's it. clothing. I think it's a piece of clothing, <laughs> as I recall. What is a knickerbocker? A knickerbocker is a New Yorker. It's just a New Yorker. Huh. Interesting. No, no, it's the style of pants that the settlers wore. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they say uh, it's lost in your knickers. Yeah. That, uh, in England, they would always say that, like, oh, strip down in the right. knickers. All right. So it's this type of pants. Oh, and it's uh, people that could, oh, it was people in uh, New York who could trace their ancestry to the original Dutch settlers. the old country. And doesn't that seem like something Dutch would wear? Hey. Yeah, not today. I Isn't mean, that your in, cologne? In the 1600s. Isn't that man. the name of your cologne, Scott? Yeah, the Dutch. The Dutch. It's called the Dutch. <laughs> we got to make that someday. We do, right? That's sick. <laughs> You know the best thing about <laughs> Dude, AI is, Grambo? Is this AI over here? Dude, just getting way too high on his Gandalf pipe. Wow, that concerns me, man. <laughs> Careful, dude. <laughs> All right, hijack over, sir. All right, let's take it to comments, man. This is uh, regarding the AC Infinity clone kit. I think you got one of these, Scott, you know? I do have one. I'm Pull looking around for it. It is just out of arm's reach. But yeah, I actually want to so purchase sweet. one of these That's just cool. to show some love because it's pretty badass just real quick it's got lights it's got a, a clone dome it's got a heat mat it's got a controller uh for 84 bucks that's wow. pretty cool yeah the heat mat thing man yeah you gotta have a good heat mat yeah okay was over there um yeah it's nice everything comes in one looking at their uh grow tents because i need to get another grow tent i decided even though it's not by much my four by three where my four by three tent is from AC Infinity, a four by four will fit. I'm like shiz, man, a whole extra foot. How many square extra square feet? It'll be another four square feet. And I'm looking at where I can put. Wait, I'm trying wait, to time out my grow. Hang on, we got to do math here. One yeah, more. It's four. It's two foot wide. Isn't that two square feet? No. I have a three by four now, and I'm going to oh. a four by four. Yeah. That's a tough one. So, <laughs> 12, four, 12 and 16. It's got to be yeah, your so four. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I got it, man. Together, uh, we can do math. Anyway, 
Dude, the, I, it was just tripping me out because tents used to be, you know, I worked hydroponic retail for a while and, you know, there's some brands out there um, that I mean, Secret Jardin was one of them. And I think everybody's adjusted their prices at this day and age. But back when we, were, when we were banking, you know, the price per pound was way up and we were willing as growers to pay a lot for shiz at the grocery store. Um, and like, I was like, man, I got to get a four by four. How much is that going to be? It's probably going to be like 300 something bucks. With coupon code, dude, it's like a hundred and fifty something box. Yeah. Four, four by four ten. That's yeah. badass. So, yeah. um, sorry, it's, I think it's coupon code, dude grows. They're all at dudegrows.com forward slash pros if you want to hook up with AC Infinity. But I got one of those coming. So now my tent game is strong, dude. I got this one behind me, which I'm currently not using. That is a Secret Jardin three by two. It's an odd size. It's called their Shorty. It's only a four foot tall. And then my three by four, my four by four, and then my grow room. And I think I made that. How many tents can you can you do you get for like you're officially gangster in the tent game? I think all I think you, you need, need is one Mac Daddy grow room to be a gangster, dude. <laughs> no, but it is true. And you yeah. go to people's houses and they have more than one. Once you have more than one, you're kind of legit. You know, you show up at somebody's house and they have two grow tents. You're like, yeah, <laughs> three. You're bordering on Shout legendary. Out. Okay, I'm about to have three. Shout out to old, to old, old cannabis and his tent game. It is. It's tough though. Think about it quickly. The more tents you have unless they're dialed like you don't sometimes you can scramble to manage that because there's going to be different environments different areas of your house different phases of growth um so yeah don't make too much grow work for you that is nice though one of them is going to be in the kitchen this year the first time i'm going to try a tent <laughs> in the kitchen with five gal vegetative plants in it mother-in-law's nose is the test <laughs> why the kitchen you know what, man? Is something special that's where that? the room is man the room that's uh, where there's some room i will tell you i've been friends with dude a long time and if <laughs> anyone can pull that off it is you dude I was able to convince the wife that I needed to put a two by four in the kitchen for my peppers. And that's currently happening. So why can't those peppers, which they're about done, I'm going to take them out and put some weed in there. I like the way you do Baby go. steps, dude. Baby steps, you know? Yes. Normalize. Normalize. <laughs> and don't even tell them that it switched from peppers to weed. Just let that happen naturally. <laughs> hey, I'm looking at uh, Aaron right. Weeks comment, man. Can I take it? What's up? Uh, yes. It says uh, this is a review of the AC Infinity Clone Kit. Lights are <laughs> lights so. are pretty intense on those AC Infinity domes, but do a stellar job. I've been arranging our cuts around the outsides instead of the middle of the tray where the lights are more focused, and then only keeping the light the lights at the first setting. I don't understand. Uh, they're dimmable. Fent the lights oh, have different. Gotcha. They're, 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 that's Thank super you. cool. They're Thank dimmable you. and they have a built in timer with a button. It's so easy. You don't set a timer. It's just vegetative 18 hours with one button push. You're good. Yeah. Fantastic results. Roots within six to seven days. 18 hours. You don't run your clones 24 hours? I don't. Let us know, guys. Give us some comments. I, I, I always like to let my baby sleep a little. Why, well, you think you get roots quicker? 24 hours? I would think so, man. Let me do the math on that to see how many more percentage that is. It's eight mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. ten. No, you know, you're giving them substantial more time where they're are they photosynthesizing at that point? Yeah, because they're and they're taking that energy and building their roots with it. I barely believe when people say roots in six to seven days when you're in like rapid rooters or a clone dome, because sure, you're in a cloning like system, like with sprayers where you could bare root cuts, you can lift up a neoprene clone and, and look right at the node, like, oh, your mm -hmm. root's coming. My mm -hmm. clones all took, before I saw any tiny bit of root coming out of my little cubes, probably at least 12 days before I even saw it. And then they all started coming and popping out. And when you're huh. seeing roots in six, seven days, that's, congrats. I'm not Strain dependent. Them, I'm not, I'm not, Strain dependent. Yeah. There is that hybrid vigor they talk about. Oh, and you can get a plant right off a seed. That thing can be crazy, man. Crazy. Vigorous. Which I didn't give her an update. I haven't cloned in probably a couple of years, man. I got 23 out of 25 to root. So I was to all, it took two weeks just to see all the roots, but I was pretty sure. Really? Nice. Excellent, man. I got to say, I didn't that even clone. use a razor blade. Just sharp scissors, by the way. I didn't even use a razor blade to take them just and scrape the yeah. side with the scissors. Put them in. I don't, I don't use a razor blade, man. I use these. All yeah. right. Yeah. All right. I Me too. It. I said it. The Fiskers. Yeah. I've been cloning with the Fiskers since the beginning. The idea is that you can bruise the, uh, like, you're supposed to make a really clean incision or basically where the, you know, whatever to, to remove them. And uh, these kind of crush. There's, you know, if they're not, even if they are sharp, it kind of crushes instead of just a clean slice with a scalpel mm. or a razor blade. But man, cannabis is pretty easy to clone, man. All right. Yeah. Dude just proved it. 
Most definitely. Most definitely. It likes to grow. It, I mean, the one I have one in my fish tank over here from, I'd say, a month old now. It hasn't started any roots, but it looks totally healthy at the top. And then I took one of my extra clones that didn't have the heart to kill. I'm like, why not grow it aquaponically and have some fun? It already has roots coming like six, eight inches yeah. down into the water. Here, cool. Which is great for the fish tank, too. That's dope. Um, hey, I'll tell you something I learned by being lazy, and it happens frequently. I'm man. listening. <laughs> no, I had some clones that I was uh, that I was gonna throw out. You know, I didn't make the grade, and I left them outside. I uh, just, you know, I was gonna throw them out. They've been in what is essentially a refrigerator because it hasn't been freezing inside the garage, but it's certainly been cold there, and they just they're not dying. You know, they're just you could take this thing and revive it, you know? So putting a clone in colder temperatures or as long as it's not frozen, but man, it's a good way to preserve it. Like probably a good, good time to ship right now. As long as it's not freezing where you're where it's going. That's true. Also keep shiz backed up. I'm like, well, at least I have one of my orange gasms that I want to keep in my fish tank in case like my grow room just <laughs> right. totally dies for some reason. So keep things backed up in an interesting way if you can. Uh, let's go to a couple more comments here. We have, uh, do we do? Oh, craw, oh, craw daddy regarding shipping clones. I've shipped four rooted cuttings to a friend of ours and it took them at least four days to get only lost one. And it was amazed because of the cold weather. You know, that's the story when Scotty shipping clones from Florida back in the day in Rockwell, the bottom of the rock Ooh, had ice on it. Trip. That they lived. Back when trips. How many there are out there. there? I think you're clear, but trip still, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh yeah. Uh, Daybird. But- Oh, I just want to say freezing, bad, cool, not bad, man. Cool, preserve. Yeah, you know, think about a refrigerator. Um, I agree. I agree. Although I've never put clones in a refrigerator. <laughs> mm. uh, well, you could, dude. All right. You could. Because what happens if you freeze things, then uh, the water expands and yeah. breaks all the capillaries. Plus all the, the actual cell membranes of the actual like plant material starts to burst. Yeah, that's what? why meat gets freezer burn. Tell me one other thing, Grambo. You're smart that expands when it gets cold. Um. Well, <laughs> no, no, sorry. Remember, we showed that Icelandic girl fishing. No big deal. <laughs> no, it's okay. weird, though, Bring right? Back. Uh, Jaybird634 says, love the show. Nothing like starting the day with the DGC coffee and cannabis. Hey, God bless. Shout out to Jaybird. We became yeah. friends recently. I know her. She's amazing, like a content producer. Shout out. No, it's great. You know, Scott, the show is awesome. Uh, you know, for, for people listening, Scotty, you know, before the show had some work related call that was ticking them off a little, I had a problem with a shipment with customs and shiz. And then we get into the show and you forget your worries and it's like hanging out with friends, smoking cannabis. And I always have a little cold brew caffeine with me as well. And maybe from now on the Gandalf pipe, because it back to, <laughs> ah, that long story. Shout out Jaybird. I, I got Maxwell David, seven, five, five, five. On biochar recently, we discussed biochar on this last Saturday show. Maybe yeah, biochar good, improved ev- every aspect of my plants and cocoa. That's it. Done. Drop the drop the mic. I mean, uh, that that's cool. I'm, like I said, it's not that expensive. And when I'm mixing my cocoa now, I'm all, you know it's in a big tote. I pour the whole bag of can of cocoa in there in a big tote. I know a 150 liter bag takes this amount of grow dots that I have to mix everything all in. So while I'm doing that process, it's no extra labor to put other shiz in. So I think I might have to get yes. a biochar train to uh, check it out. One of the, is it that? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, TH1789, key with biochar. If a purchaser or even making it before using it in the garden, you must realize biochar retains and will absorb your NPK. That's why I have to pre-charge it. It says if pre-charge uh, like cocoa, then you're fine or recharge it yourself. So basically you soak it in some recharge or you can make like a casting tea or something. Oh, but there's got, this is a new real growers product. Pre-charge. Pre-charge. That I like sick. it. I'm Hang still on, confused. Did you see dude's face? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sir. still confused on this because if I'm using biochar, I don't, so they don't sell it said pre-charge. Actually, I know build a soil, I think has one that has some different things in it. But if I get regular old biochar, I mend it into my cocoa. And the first thing I'm going to do anyway with my transplants is water in recharge. What's the difference between watering in versus soaking it, pre-putting it into my cocoa? 
because there's billion, you know, there's all these different capillaries or pores or whatever you want to call them, these inside spaces, and you want to fill that up. So if you submerge something in a bucket of compost tea or recharge or whatever, it's getting in all those nooks and crannies. Yeah, by the Build the Soil website, they are they are pre-charged there. Yeah, I would mix think of so. Ferti nitro so, soy aminos. Ah, uh, there you go. Something to cover and the I walls, pre- you know. Yeah. Okay, we got some news here. Before the news, uh, you guys talk, hear me talking about ways to support the show. DDC produces number one. Thank you. Number two, it's not our pros list. Dogrows.com forward slash pros. These are DGC vetted pros. It's not just when we're, when we're choosing to work with the company and the grow gear or seeds. Um, we, we meet with these people. We talk, we've met them at trade shows. We make sure they have customer service. They have good products. DGC is using them. So dogrows.com forward slash Pros has all the coupon codes listed. Uh, whether you want some Integra to keep your herb fresh, optic fuller, nice scroll, Grambo. Go over there, check it out. Go with your dollars, help support the show. Yes. Uh, okay, news, dude. Uh, the like war on it, drugs man. is a failure. Okay, tell me about it, Scotty. Dude, they found 11 tons of cocaine in shipping containers, man. That, and like with the frozen a, fish. That's a lot of... Like, a, just give it up, man. I mean, people that want to use drugs are able to find those drugs. 11 tons. And it's because there's... This is like one of them that must have gotten busted. You think everyone got busted? There's just shipping containers of cocaine coming into the country. This one was in Spain. I mean, but the point is, that's how they do it, you know? So that that is twenty two thousand pounds. Yeah, with all of yeah. this, and that, we don't have to Pound, get on the, the full rabbit. How many eight balls is that? <laughs> just one. <laughs> just one in Florida, bro. <laughs> with all the, um, there's a lot of ways this discussion could go. But real quick, as you say, Scotty, make it all legal uh, for one. Um, in a lot of areas, not just here, especially, you know, where I live in, in British Columbia, the amount of people dying from like bad shiz, you know, that is not uh, that's a fentanyl, fentanyl or whatever. That, that's all. Well, there's that well, there's people that are putting there's people that thought they were getting cocaine and they died because there's fentanyl. In. So, I mean, it's, it goes both ways. And my son's like, well, if you make it all legal, then and so many people are going to do it. Do either of you really think that nobody's just going to go, oh, Heroin's legal now. Well, honey, let's let's just let's go for it. That was the only know. thing stopping them. Yeah, I don't know. There's that opioid epidemic that happened here because it kind of became legal. And he'd go to your doctor and be like, yeah, I'm thinking about trying those opioids, man. And the doctor would be like, hey, they're good. And then we got a lot of people addicted to them. Man. Well, so it, I'm not saying legal like deal. that. We're not going to follow that South Florida uh, uh, pill mill model, of course. <laughs> There's not a but ton of data ha- about the the, the EU co- uh, countries that have legalized. There, there isn't a lot of data about it, but it seems to be going well. Like a lot of those, the, like the, the Nordic countries, Sweden, yeah. Finland, they have like injection sites and stuff. And heroin use has dropped by like 60%. So it's not a lot of ton of good data, but... I don't know. Legalization. Maybe. I just know any one of my friends I can think of, any one of my friends, kids, my kids, anybody I can think of in my life is not going to go start doing any of the drugs that are legal tomorrow. Yeah. Other than marijuana, of course. A lot of people have gone <laughs> to do that. Here's a Ricky, Ricky Bobby growth report here, man. He's getting so big. Getting big, man. Yeah, getting big. Build, and his hair is getting long. Yeah, he'd be. A good looking dog. Good looking dog, man. I know how it good goes. Boy. I know how it goes in Scotty's house. It's a self-serve, self-serve dog feeding station. <laughs> yes. We've actually had to stop that now, man. <laughs> they get aggressive. <laughs> oh, nice. What's up? How old's Ricky Bobby now? I don't know. I don't know. Three or a few months or something like that. I don't know. Months, about six yeah. months old, I think. Fish. Somewhere around there. There's a little baby when he showed up. Nice. nice. Yeah. Good boy. Uh, all right. Tommy all right, Charles all right. In the news, what else do we have? Can oh, this was yours. This is cool. The, uh, yeah. What is this? Can cocoa core coolers replace plastic ones? Yeah, oh. man, they're making coolers out of cocoa core, Why and not? it's just like the insulation and the, it, scroll down if you would. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, that's, that's cool. That's and it was something insulator. interesting. Look at all that cooler mess there, man. Those Boy. are styrofoam coolers like washed up on a beach somewhere. Boy. Oh, Dude, hang on, stop. The, right, right, yes, yes, yes. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening there, man? Dude. Oh, wow. That, so that guy's carrying styrofoam coolers. It's saying at any given time, there's 300,000 styrofoam boxes moving through the Philippines, domestic seafood trade. Oh, Damn. Wow. Yeah, let's replace them with cocoa, man. 
Yeah, right? Uh, I don't know if you can scroll down. Does it show the Coco ones? Yeah, right? They're pretty. Yeah. But that one seems to have some plastic on the top. But it, <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Not all of them a whole yeah. Um, I dig it, man. There are so many different things. Like, if we can just implement this, the hardest thing, I think, is the, the red tape and the government, just like hempcrete, if you will. So if we can set up infrastructure to support producing that, growing more hemp, for all kinds of products, man, the world's going to be a better place using the natural products we have here. Don't get me wrong. Plastic has its place. It's just obviously severely overused. Well, dude, they really do need to figure out. They're not that far away from finding the right microbe combination to break plastics back down again. Uh, when that it's happens, it'll be a big deal. Mold. What's it going to be broken down into? <laughs> into its uh, hyd- uh, carbon and hydrogen. Not bad. I like those things. What happens when those microbes escape into nature and like start eating the plastic <laughs> like your car. I don't want to talk about it, man. Don't get us banned, bro. Micro man. <laughs> I'm micro man. <laughs> All right. We got another major, another news story out of Colorado. Um, MJBizDaily.com. What's up? Another major marijuana brand exits the Colorado market. Oh, Coda Signature. No way. Coda, Coda Signature. Coda was awesome. Home, yeah. Uh, yeah. Homegrown, award-winning cannabis edible maker will uh, will concentrate efforts in other markets after facing escalating challenges in Colorado since COVID-19, according to Denver Alt Weekly West. Okay. Well, what's yeah, the, your take on this, Scotty? The numbers are down, man. People are not spending as much money at the dispensaries, or at least the overall money that dispensaries are bringing in uh, is way down. Grambo can attest to this. Prices are low. Yeah. Like You can get a decent gram for 25 bucks. Yeah, we talked about cheaper. that during Black Friday. They can't even do deals anymore because margins are so tight. Yeah, so it's uh, it's becoming. And, but me and Banner were talking this morning, and I'm like, dude, actually, I think it was high CR. I was talking to and I'm like they've got uh, uh, coffee beans that take them they only grow once a year you know one season then they give them to that marmot and wait for them to poop them out you know what I'm talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, that's a real thing. and that but, stuff oh. goes only for like a couple hundred a pound like all the work that goes into that and they only get a couple hundred a pound for it you know we talked about it it was the risk right is the fact you're going to jail is the only reason this plant was worth that much money was jail yeah I mean now it's becoming a commodity, you know, a commodity, not a commodity, not, not a commodity. Yet. But there's also high C gave me that great book ideas that stick. And they talked about there's like there's the value driven market and the commodities market and cannabis will be both, you know. He gave us both that book. Yeah. I waited for you to read it. Remember how it started with the liver? Like a guy had his kidney removed. We were both like, hi, C, what did you do? Yeah, it's a good book, man. It was good great. Book. Ideas the stick. Yeah, it makes me think. I believe canopy growth up here. Um it's uh, announces completed sale of this works like they're not doing good at all. And they're really big. And it makes me wonder, like, dude, when, you know, something becomes legal, like federally legal four years ago in Canada and they formed a few different companies. Is it, initially, the people that still started that or own that company are, are filthy rich from taking in people's money. But it just didn't work out like kind of isn't that a business model to some degree? Sell it at the peak. Yeah, it's a good business. But also, model. she uh, she started this company. She was a candy candy confectioner, and then she got in the cannabis game. So oh, they were good. they were everywhere, and one of the best products. So if top quality, cheap, and everywhere isn't good enough to make it in this market, I don't know what it's going to take. No, I would think of dude. You don't get the federal tax break. All right, right. so you're paying nothing. You can, yeah, if you guys don't understand deductible. that, you you like how people usually deduct things off their taxes. Cannabis businesses can't really do that. Like a lot of stuff, they can't write off. Yes, so that's that's a big deal. So therefore, if you're and by the way, everything is regulated like crazy. Anytime you have regulation, you're talking costs way more money to produce something to do business. Yeah, and then just think about an indoor grow facility. The amount that it costs to get that set up and to mm-hmm. run, that's a lot of people that have to run it. And there's a lot of procedures that go through it. And you hire one wrong oh. person and the whole dominoes collapses and you go broke. Right. One bad head. I was reading about uh, this canopy growth here. They did some move to stay on the NASDAQ consolidated shares, a bunch of, you know, not good stuff business wise. And it's basically saying one of the biggest influences in Canada is there's a still strong black market so how much you know when a, the, the the market here for example in british columbia i was pretty amazed it's, it's legacy it's been here a long time um it's super easy just to get the same exact edibles better 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 weed good prices don't have to deal with you know taxes going to the dispensary you're helping your buddy out sure etc et 
I just hope I, I, that's got to be happening in the States too. Of course, we always preach on the show. Once you add up, if you're really like somebody that likes the Coke and your, your, your seats the year, and then you look at from going to the dispo, you look at how much it would be for you to get a two by four tent. And it's not hard to grow this plant, man. I mean, it can be, we'll sure we'll say that, but as far as I grow peppers, exotic peppers inside, those are harder for me to grow than wheat, you know? So, um, I just still encourage that though. That yeah. Uh, I'll shout out Absolutely. to, uh, our buddy taking tops, right? Scott, like he's out there holding it. Just what dude's get. Like, like he's got edibles, dabs, weed. Like he's in that middle ground where it's like, you know, whatever, whatever. And it's, it's great. It's amazing. We need more people stepping up and doing that sort of stuff. Overgrow the government. He just gives them away. Man. Wait, so, wait. I, yeah. We didn't say that. Grambo. No, we didn't say anything about the government. Uh-uh. Come on. Uh-uh. Over. We didn't say anything government. about it. Simmer down. Don't tell Grambo anything, man. All right. I know nothing. <laughs> uh, anyway, I just thought it was interesting that, uh, you know, this industry is maturing now. And, dude, it's it's getting cheap. Hey, I don't know. How low do you think it's going to go, man? A few hundred dollars a pound? Um, I know that they claimed that some businesses like this was years ago, maybe eight years ago, whatever, but we covered it on our show. They set up their business model and large indoor factory production at being able to completely profit at $200 a pound just due to what they're able to put out volume wise. But uh, again, this is landscape is always changing. Um, we'll see what happens with said federal well, not federal legalization, declassification. We haven't talked about Rescheduling, that. Rescheduling. Yeah. I think legalization is the only way that's going to get it to uh, to get your tax credits or your tax deductions, I should say. Right. The rescheduling, I watched a decent YouTube show on it. Damn it. Sorry, I can't shout it out in the DDC that recommended it to me. But basically, in a nutshell, so far seems it's going to be, like you said, Scotty, to help businesses operate like a regular business, to be able to have certain write-offs, to be able to use banking. Um, so I don't see it doing much more than that so far from what, what I've seen. As well, that's enough. huge. Do you, what you just said was huge, man. Dude, could you imagine if you could as a business person, if I buy a machine, uh, I get to deduct that from my taxes. I instead of saying I made a hundred thousand dollars that year, I can say I spent eighty thousand dollars on a machine. So I only got to pay taxes on twenty grand. That's a big deal. You know, you know how much equipment yep. that cannabis uh, producers have to buy. Do you imagine if they have to pay like full on taxes on that as income? That's crazy. Yep. yep, you'd be set up to fail. Of course, these businesses are failing. Um, yeah, I'm glad I didn't know a lot of people, some friends that, you know, got it. There was a, a heyday of getting in. You call it the backpack days, you know, getting into well, maybe different. setting up a grow, <laughs> grow for a while. But backpack days real quick, guys, are when you could go to the dispensary with a backpack and sell them their weed <laughs> and like, walk out. You'd walk in with a backpack full of weed and you would walk out with a backpack full of money. And it was like three grand a pound back then. And I mean, I'm talking like 15, 20 grand. You would walk out with and you'd be like, okay. And they'd scope it right walk there and then. They'd have the scopes. they check for mites, yeah. like mite poop and stuff. Yeah, and, they would. You know. Mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll see. Just grow, grow the dank now. That's what, if you are growing and you're growing for the free market, the black market, I guess people have told me it's not really the free market, dude. Legacy market. We'll, we'll ah, call it legacy market. Yeah. It's still worth it, man. If you, but you have to grow some of the best of the best that's out there these days if you're going to get anything return on investment. It's so true. Um, let's shout out to producers, man, before we get out of here. Uh, not get out of here, but yeah, let me shout out a few here. We got Kite Lupa. Kite Lupa. How you doing? What's going on? That reminds me to watch Charlie and the Chocolate Factory for the holidays, maybe. That's a good one. That's a good one for a little bit of mushrooms, too. Oh, yeah. Didn't they just come out with a new one? I'm pretty sure my kid went and saw a new one. We don't night. speak of it. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Didn't he party? Isn't that the Johnny Depp one? Isn't this the worst movie I ever? I thought he did. No, John, the Johnny All Depp, right. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is not bad, yeah, is it? Yeah, it's pretty bad. It is? Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I saw it, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Grambo <laughs> movie reviews it. coming soon. What's up, Crossroads and Great Lakes? Jay, what's yeah. going on? Thank you for helping produce the new growth show. Who you got, Scotty? Uh, from the Fogatorium. <laughs> Peter Rabbit. All right. The Peter Fogatorium. Rabbit. I want my bedroom to be called the Fogatorium. It is from the Fogatorium. <laughs> and who comes from there? Peter Rabbit, sir. Not just another dude. Uh, all right. Not Peter just, Rabbit. Not you just are just another, another dude. dude, huh? I get it, man. Yes. Thank you, DGC. I appreciate the love. 
Dudegrows.com forward slash support, man. Believe me, the new year is going to be good for you guys. I'm going to be working hard for you guys on the hookups for supporting our show because I want to keep this rolling. I want to be DGC supported. Makes this a good time for everybody. Takes care of the team and you guys. So, uh, all right. Anything else? Do we have another comment here, Scotty? Or we make us laugh? Oh, hey, dude, this is something, man. I will say that uh, I'll shout out. I'll take my shout out for SurfsideCosta.com. That is my uh, Costa Rica place over there. Mm. And, uh, yeah, we rent that thing out. And me and JR Token agreed in principle to go down there, man. So, okay. Grambo, you coming? Yeah, when are we going? I don't know. We agreed only in principle. We have to figure it out. <laughs> dude, come on. We should have a DGC party in Costa Rica. That would be sick. Pool no, and a I pond. Just Pond as the uh, food, what's the person that takes care of uh, P, is it PR in a company when you take care of like relations per, between sure uh, personal relations sure HR human relations yeah yeah HR there we go Isn't that HR. banner Isn't around it, here Scott? meeting with <laughs> Grambo I'm your HR uh, specialist with Dude Grow Show I just want to make sure that you don't get too much Scotty time considering the Costa Rica vacation I am for it but make sure you do a review I'm just kidding it's like when you go on vacation said vacation with people you work with. But as we're all friends, I'm just having fun. Yeah, but. we'll be fine, man. <laughs> we'll be fine. See that other place, the other side? That's where I stay. Yes. Yeah, you guys perfect. all over there. Perfect. Yes. Nice. I like it. Uh, <laughs> no, no, but seriously. Scott, I'll shout out too. And that's the Surf view you can look forward to. I've gone down there. My son uh, got up on a surfboard more than anywhere else he's been in his life down right by your spot. So it's awesome. Dope. Yes. And man, I got the window seat on the way home. And I was like, dude, the sun is setting, and it was just beautiful, man. Those are the moments when you go, man, like, how good is it to live on Earth? This is a it's, nice place. It was place. just amazing, man. You know? awesome. And you can see how flat it is there, right, oh Grandpa? Oh, my God. See what I proved? <laughs> <laughs> Ice wall. Uh, hey, do me a favor, man. Uh, the landing strip is a little rough in Costa, man. Um <laughs> Is this actual footage? No. <laughs> Instagram showed me this, man. This is, has nothing to do right. with Costa Rica, man. But what is happening there? That's square grouper, I'm thinking. Right? And that has got to be. <laughs> I mean, dude, would you ever get back in the plane with that guy when he's like, yeah, we got to take off now, man? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Johnny Depp in that movie. <laughs> that is insane. That's the airplane man. from Blow. You're reminding me of uh, when Grambo has an, I, I don't know if you've only flew like two times or three times and you sat next to me going to the Cowboy Cup, believe I'm like an aviation nerd a little bit. And yeah. you're like, oh, you know, uh, this airline has only lost one person. Due yeah, to the right. Head Qantas. Head, but they, like all those but the window broke and they were sucked out and ah. her, her, she was scalped by air pressure. Rambo, just because I don't want to kill my Costa Rica vibe, show them what the really airport looks like, man. It's a real airport, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There okay. you go. Yes. All right, look, it's not... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going. This is this is. The, yeah, come on, yeah, man. No, you. The last time you went, we keep doing the shows from there, and so yeah, how cool would that be? Like we do the live shows from Costa Rica. If you want to stay in the place that Scott does the shows you know, from, you can. Well, I mean, there's limited the availability, show. man. All right, limited but uh, yeah, there is yeah. mountain biking there. I'll, I'll sign up. I'll go to go mountain biking as well. Excellent bike in there. All right, We're there's my. This. I'm trying to. I'm trying to go there a little bit more. It's wonderful, especially during the winter. Oh boy, but. Uh, Hey, Dale's Dankness, we got some memes, man. Right. We got some memes. Let's see. <laughs> this is just DGC right here, man. Just <laughs> got any fatherly advice for me? DGC, don't get caught. Nice. That's it, man. That's it. Oh, and he's got a Canada shirt. Yeah, why is he got a Canada shirt? <laughs> why is the dad so big, man? What is what kind of genre is this? Is that Omni Man? Let us know in the chat. Uh, I keep seeing this character. He's Omni Man. Who is that? Let me know. I can't figure. Muscle it out. Dad. Shout out Dale's Dankness. Yeah, here you go. We know it's smoke, man. By Dale's Dankness. Oh, and this fire. is just a little statement, man. It's salt growers on one side, organic growers on the other side. Hey, and yeah. dank ass weed I would smoke right down the middle, man. Right at the end of the slide. <laughs> that, that is good. good. That I is like a, it. Thank you. That means like supporting world peace. I like it. Whoa. And you know what it means, man? That two people with completely opposite uh, views of the world can both be right. Yeah. Man. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. You know who else is always right? Mm hmm. Chuck Norris. All right. Have you ever seen, all right, Cable Guy, have you seen Lone Wolf McQuaid? I've heard of it. I have not actually seen Lone Wolf McQuaid. Uh, I love that truck. Can you up two Texas Ranger? I might Oh, it's so awesome, man. 
<laughs> Chuck Norris fact. His trucks are fueled by Chuck power. Oh, my God. Come on. <laughs> That's awesome. So, all right, ready? I got one for you. So, who's tougher? Chuck Norris. And then we got Techno Viking. Grandpa, we show Techno Viking? Yes, we got Techno Viking. <laughs> okay. So, you got him. Uh-huh. Come on, give us a little Techno Viking vibe, man. Come on, man. <laughs> All right. And now you got him first. Yeah. Who's the other guy, man? What's this guy called? Uh, well, I had my own name for I called him Black Thor. <laughs> Look at this guy, man. <laughs> That's a two, rent is too damn high guy. Gotta buy me some more Hennessy. I gotta buy me some more Hennessy. <laughs> Oh my God! What is happening? So this is man. Venice Beach, maybe? Yeah, Venice Beach. I don't know. My algorithm is on fire, man. Oh, so is his body. Is money. That's <laughs> money. Nice. Move. So who wins, man? Does that guy win, or does yeah. Techno Viking take him uh, out? Or Black, you know, Black, Chuck Norris. Black Thor right? has it, man. Come oh on. shit! Chuck yeah, Norris is gonna so. knock him out with a leg kick to the face, That's man. <sighs> <laughs> Chuck Norris. You cannot go against Chuck Norris, man. I don't know. This guy can. The red's, it, the red's too damn high. Just this last one just makes me laugh because it's my reality, man. Mm -hmm. And it's like my ancestors. What, that's supposed to be somebody up in heaven looking at you that, That's something? your ancestor, Scott. <laughs> my ancestors watching me use a GPS to get somewhere I've been 14 times. Ouch. <laughs> yep. There's my reality, man. <laughs> oh, that one that. just... That, that would that would be my house when I lived in Colorado. I remember one time, I'm like, Scotty, you've been down here six times now. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a weakness I have, oh, sir. Man. It's a weakness. Great yeah, times, it's a guys. Happy holidays. Don't forget, uh, our last live show was awesome, man. Our last live show, we had uh, Future 4200. Um, we also hung out with Scotty, Pedro action, the Rambo, man. Pedro Grow Room, yes, and uh, man, talked a lot about uh, hash, concentrates, this and that, life. So don't forget our live shows on Monday. Click that live tab on the YouTube page if you want to check them out. And uh, everybody, have a good holiday. We'll be coming at you Saturday. We've got another show coming before the holidays for you. And stay higher, my friends. Hang on a second. Monday is what? New Year's Day? Monday is uh, Christmas this upcoming and then New Year's Day the following. Wait, where am I? I don't know. Man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I might try to do something for you guys next Monday. We'll see. You're right here. <laughs> <laughs> Take her easy, dude.